U.S. Farm Report, a public information program brought to you in the interest of agriculture, rural business, and the well-being of our nation by members of the National Farmers Organization in this area and others interested in having American agriculture receive cost of production plus a reasonable profit. The American farmers and ranchers are building a brighter future for agriculture through the National Farmers Organization, the organization that awoke America and represents the leadership of agriculture. U.S. Farm Report features as special guest Oran Lee Staley, president of the National Farmers Organization, the organization which has pioneered collective bargaining for American agriculture. The NFO All Commodity Holding Action is continuing to gain strength and is building in effect. This holding action is the American farmers' opportunity to put a price tag on their products. In the same manner that every businessman puts a price tag on the products that he has to sell. The decisions that the farmers make this hour, this day, and this week, and in the days ahead, are going to determine whether farmers continue to receive the present low prices, or whether they put a price tag on their products and get a fair price for their products. No one else is going to do it for farmers. And really, no one else should. Farmers are the businessmen that represent American agriculture at the production level. They own the food products and the food commodities first. Therefore, they should be interested enough in their own business to put their price tag on their products. But as individuals, they cannot do this. And I want to explain the reason it's necessary to have an all-commodity holding action. And the reason this all-commodity holding action is building in strength. And why it is going to achieve substantial results in addition to the results already achieved. Because farmers have no other hope, no other alternative, and the NFO has gained enough strength, enough understanding, and enough support that we're getting the greatest surge of new membership that we have ever gotten. And this is what counts, because farmers cannot meet their problems as individuals. Today, almost everyone is saying collective bargaining is necessary for the American farmer. Some people say, yes, we believe in bargaining power for farmers, but we do not agree with the NFO methods. Let's analyze those methods, the strategy behind the methods, and why the methods are necessary that we're using. First, I'd like to say, I bought this suit of clothes from a good friend of mine. I liked the fall. But I didn't like him well enough to pay the price that I paid for this suit of clothes. If he had let me choose the price that I was going to pay for this suit of clothes, I'm sure it would have been considerably less. So we have to remember that no one in this economy pays more for a product price-wise than they have to. And the price tag on everyone else's commodity, except the farmer, when he produces the commodity and sells it for the first time, is the only one that says, what will you give me? After it leaves the farmer's hand, then the food commodities start having price tags put on them. So there are several basic points that I want to discuss with you so you'll understand why we're having the all-commodity holding action, why we're asking all non-members to join the NFO that are producers of agricultural commodities, and why we keep stressing that we're not asking you to desert your present farm organization because you don't need to. You can continue as members of your present farm organization. That is your decision. All we're asking you to do is to join the NFO for the purpose of uniting your production so that you can use the NFO collective bargaining program to put a price tag on your product. Today, the American farmers should realize that no one else is going to do it for them. No one else ever has. 
They've seen many hopes built. They've seen those hopes fade. Now they have the opportunity to do it themselves. So collective bargaining is necessary today because there are only a few fundamental factors that we have to understand in order to be able to know why collective bargaining is necessary. Absolutely necessary. Today, the American farmers are the only unorganized segment of an organized economy. Let me explain why. The local grocery stores that you used to know around a small city have disappeared. And they've been replaced by shopping centers with large supermarkets. And you see the, these names on the front of the supermarkets appear whenever you travel in other cities far distant. And this has brought volume buying volume buying to the level of the, of the food commodity that you and I eat, so that today this volume buying at the chain store level is largely determining the price that farmers receive for their product. So this means an individual farmer cannot compete with this type of economic strength. Let's use some other examples. The corporate structure that manufactures the products that you and I use, either on the farm or in the home or wherever they may be, is a structure that has been built so that uh, when the corporate structure at the manufacturing level manufactures a product, they put the price tag there based on the cost of production plus a reasonable profit. And then they established local dealerships, not two in the same community of three, but one in this community, one in another community, far enough apart so that there are enough potential customers. And then they send out a suggested retail price. Now, the local merchant doesn't have to follow this. But if he goes over into the other dealer's territory and undercuts price too much, for some reason, somehow, he loses his dealership. The working people are well organized. We've seen the school teachers making dramatic gains, although they've been criticized, just as the NFO has, for the fact that they're not using the proper method. I've read editorials saying that the school teachers did have deplorable conditions. The big metropolitan press sometimes has written editorials along this line. Some of the editorials have been favorable. But everyone agreed on one point, that the school teachers had not been treated fairly. But they said the school teachers shouldn't strike. They did not approve of their method. But they are getting results. Results that they could not get as individuals. And so it means that everyone else in this economy is organized except the American farmer. And as long as the American farmer remains unorganized, He's going to get in a weaker and a weaker position because you have nothing to say about it and shouldn't have. Whether the price is going up on tractors next year or whether the price on anything else you buy is going up because I don't think any of us expect the large corporations manufacture the products that you and I need to lower their prices. They're going to maintain their profit level. I don't think that we're going to expect organized labor to reduce the price of wages. They're going to maintain their living standards. So this means that the American farmers, unorganized, and with the tremendous volume buying and selling power at the chain store level, get in a weaker and a weaker position. For this reason, collective bargaining in agriculture is an absolute necessity. And the NFO collective bargaining program offers the farmers their only hope to meet their problems. But the American farmers are the ones that have to make the decision. They have the opportunity. They have the strength because they own the production first. And they can put their price tag on their products if they decide to do it. 
this decision has to be made by each and every individual firm. He has to look at his investment. He has to look and decide whether he thinks farmers are being treated fairly or have been treated fairly. And then he has to decide whether he wants more of what he's been getting or whether he wants to stop the low farm prices. This he cannot do himself. But through the NFO collective bargaining program, he has the opportunity now to do that very thing, stop his low prices. But first, he has to join the NFO because we cannot legally solicit nor advise non-members. There are six basic points that must be carried out for collective bargaining to be successful in American agriculture. I'd like for you to reason with me and see if you agree with me. First, farmers must organize to solve their problems. They can't solve their problems and then organize. It would be fine if we could all get together and decide that this is what we needed and this was what was fair, and then it would come about. In other words, just get out the wishbone. But this is not going to come about because I want to refer back again to this suit of clothes. I liked the fellow that I bought the suit of clothes from, but I didn't like him well enough to pay the price that I did. He had a price tag on his product. But we cannot do this as individual farmers, therefore we have to organize first. This is exactly what the NFO has been doing with a great surge of new members the greatest surge of new members in the history of our collective bargaining program. Now we're now in 35 states. It's because farmers are realizing that as businessmen, they must do something about their problems because no one else is going to do it for them. So the first point in, that must be carried out in collective bargaining for the American farmer is that the farmers themselves must take the first step they must join the NFO so that they can, together, use their production for the purpose of collective bargaining. The second step, or the second point, I should say, is this, that you must be able to bargain industry-wide. We've had experience over these last nine years, because nine years ago we started on our collective bargaining program We've been the pioneers in collective bargaining in American agriculture. Practically no one thought it would even work or was necessary when we started. But now we've built our organization to the 35 state area. We've had the largest meetings of farmers ever been held in the nation. The largest convention of farmers. And now the great sympathy and understanding of almost every farmer. But it takes more than sympathy and understanding. It takes determination and courage to make collective bargaining work because it's a struggle between economic forces. And the farmers have not had the economic strength put together. They have it, but unless it's used, it doesn't accomplish anything. So this means you must be able, as a second point, to bargain industry-wide. If you have a processor that has processing plants and 30 states, we'll say 40 processing plants in 30 states, you can't do anything about bargaining with that processor or that large company if you're just in one state or in two or three states. There's no chance. You'd be very little better off than the individual farmer or the individual producer. So this means that the producer of agriculture commodities must build their organization over the entire agricultural area, it must be a structure that is coordinated so that your bargaining strength can be united for collective bargaining. Because there's a difference between collective bargaining than just bargaining power. Because the individual farmer goes to the marketplace and says, what will you give me? Unless you use that bargaining power for the purpose of collective bargaining, so that you're able to unite your strength, then your strength will not be used. 
So the first step, organize to solve your problems. You don't solve your problems and then organize. Second, you must be organized industry-wide, which the NFO is, and is continuing to strengthen the organization in all the heavy agricultural producing areas. The third point, you have to bring up in relative balance the pricing structure or the price. Let me use as an example, which I've used many times, so many other people in the NFO. They've used the point that just suppose the price of dairy products, milk products alone was the only product that came up in price. There'd be a lot of ranchers with black and blue shins trying to milk some of those old beef cows. Or think that if you just brought up the price of corn, how soybean acreage would be shifted to corn. So you must bring them all up in relative balance. And then there's no more advantage or incentive to shift from one commodity to the other. And so then if you're going to have increased production, what you have to do is either one or two things, increase the yield per acre or increase the acres. And with a hungry world, that is not overfed, but underfed. We have a great opportunity, but we are only going to make that opportunity work if we have the proper structure that not only can compete industry-wide and not only compete on all commodities, but also can have a structure which is able to meet the problems of developing new markets and maintaining present ones. But back again, three points. First, you must organize to solve your problems. You don't solve your problems and then organize. Secondly, you must bargain industry-wide. Third, you must bring all commodities up in relative balance. And the fourth point, the most misunderstood part of our collective bargaining program but it's a real difference between, between bargaining power and real collective bargaining. It's a difference between collective begging and collective bargaining. If we do not have the courage as businessmen and women to say these products are ours, and we will not sell them until we get our price, our price tag, then we don't have the courage to be real businessmen and women. Because I want to use this as an example. Suppose that all of the businessmen in the small community should say tomorrow morning, we're going to take the price tags off of our products. The law of supply and demand will operate in our town. All price tags go off tomorrow. What do you think would happen? If they announced this a day ahead of time, they wouldn't sell much the day they announced it, but they'll sell a lot more the next day at a lot lower price. The businessmen are too good business people, too intelligent, to even think about doing that. Suppose the working people said, we must have another 25 cents an hour. We must have another week's vacation. But they said to manage, but don't worry, we'll never strike again. What do you think would happen? There'd be an awful lot of people, gray-headed and in rocking chairs, worn out, waiting for it to happen. So when they, those that say, yes, we agree that collective bargaining is necessary in American agriculture, but they say, we do not agree with the NFO methods, what they're really saying is that they undoubtedly are opposed to farmers putting a price tag on their products, the same as everyone else does. Let's see how collective bargaining in American agriculture can work without a holding action. Let's take a look at it. Suppose we get all together, all of us, all farmers join. We all get together. We use the best statistics available and say these are the prices that we're entitled to. 
and these are the prices we must have. And then elected representatives go into the processors and buyers and say, these are the prices we demand, or else. Or else what? We'll deliver anyway. The all commodity holding action then is nothing more than the farmer's way to exercise their business-like attitude toward the buyers of their commodity. In other words, a holding action is only a businessman's way of putting a price tag on his product. You also have to be in a position to start bargaining here with what you have. And then you meet the problems of marketing through the structure that you've built. But the next point, after first organizing to solve your problems, not solving your problems and then organizing, bargaining industry-wide on all commodities, then the use of a holding action when necessary. The next point is what many people do not even understand that even exists. And that is you can do all the others, but if your goals are not to achieve contracts that will give you stability, then all the other efforts would be wasted. Therefore, our goal, and the goals that we're within reaching now, are to get contracts that will give us stability in the future because just a holding action in itself is not the end result of collective bargaining. It's only a step. And each holding action has brought success to NFO. Why? Because in collective bargaining, you measure success by the amount of acceptance you get from processors. And we've gotten more acceptance after each holding action than we had before the holding action began. This time, with the tremendous co support and cooperation of our members, with the surge of new members, we are confident we're going to make substantial gains. But farmers have the opportunity to really put the price tag on their products, all they have to do is to stop selling at the present low prices. The sixth point is collective bargaining means farmers bargaining together and selling together. And in this holding action, we're doing more than we have in any other holding action because we're not only holding our products, we're blocking our products together for nationwide block bargaining. We let off with grain because it took a longer period of time to have an effect with grain than it does other commodities. Meat to be added at an opportune time at a later date because it takes less time to have an effect with meat. Then milk to be added at another later date because it takes less time to have an effect with milk than it does with meat. So that we could build a climax of effect on all commodities at the same time. So it would be truly an all-commodity holding action designed to shut down the agricultural plant so farmers could put a price tag on their product. This is what we're doing. And these are the objectives that we're making great strides toward achieving. The decision that the farmers make themselves, whether to join the NFO or whether not to, will determine how much gains are made. So we have the decisions to make now. We've taken several steps. In the grain action, we took these steps and are taking them now, urging all of our members, advising them to see all the grain that they have that is eligible for loan, advising them to go into the feed grain program 50% to show that not only we're talking about no price, no production, we mean it to sign up 50%. But this is not far enough. We must then block our production together either through the NFO grain bank where the grain cannot be sold for less than a dollar and 50 cents a bushel on corn, two dollars on wheat, three dollars on soybeans, two dollars a hundred weight on grain sorghum. And then that member that says, I want to decide when my grain is going to be sold. We have a program for him the in-position grain sales program. He can put his grain in the fifth period and then decide which period of time he wants his grain sold. 
We're blocking our production together on meat, meat intentions. We're blocking our dairy production together through our phase two program. All the programs follow out the principle of collective bargaining. So I want to say to you, we're not asking farmers to desert their present farm organization. We're just asking you to join the NFO for the purpose of uniting your production so you can use the NFO collective bargaining program to put a price tag on your product. Do you realize that there's only about five days meat supply ahead, only 24 hours milk supply ahead, plus the ability, the industry, to use some of the dried milk products to blend, to stretch it out some? Farmers have the strength. All they have to do is use it. If they use the NFO and say, we're not going to sell, they're going to get their price. The final thought I want to leave with you is this. NFO has the experience. NFO is offering farmers the opportunity to stop their low prices now by refusing to sell their products at these present low prices. But you cannot look back over your shoulder next summer and say, I wished I would have helped. I wished I'd have joined NFO and become a part of the effort. Now is the time that all of agriculture should and must mobilize its strength with all non-members joining the NFO so we can all put a price tag on our products together. U.S. Farm Report has presented an address by President of the National Farmers Organization, Oren Lee Staley. Members of the National Farmers Organization invite you to tune in again next week at this same time for more facts on agriculture and rural America, which is the gear wheel in our economy that produces the majority of our nation's new wealth. The farm income pattern sets the nation's prosperity, and the National Farmers Organization represents new thinking in a new generation of farmers. <laughs>